Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Welcome back. Uh, this is part three of the Deadhead RC wet pedal build. Uh, the little 16 inch mono hull. We've got a little 2440 in it, 20 amp ESC micro servo. Uh, today we're going to be actually cutting a stuffing tube retainer. Okay, so the stuffing tube doesn't move. We've got to cut the flex cable and Teflon liner. Uh, water cooling, run the water cooling, and basically finalize the boat. Uh, we won't be able to do a maiden in this video. It's kind of nasty weather out. So uh, we're just going to finish up the boat in this video. So stick around, you guys. Big B with Ironclad RC. All right. So let's get to it, you guys. Let's get to it. Um, So this boat, this boat, it, it's a pretty cool little boat, you guys. I actually uh, sanded my hatch so it fits on there perfect. Okay. I'm kind of, I'm trying to come up with a, so, uh, a scheme or a theme for the boat so if you guys have any ideas you know throw it in the comments uh i was trying to think of a driver or find a driver i could put in here or something you know it's a cool looking little boat <laughs> but my overall um theme of the boat like performance wise was to keep it light you know i went with the 2440 4500 kv probably run like a a little 30 or 32 millimeter prop four pitch with this 20 amp aquacraft esc it's got a st slow start and i'm not really you know looking for extreme speed I, I just wanted something i could cruise around with you know and uh and, and, and it'd be fun you know not overly fast and aggressive you know so i kind of went light with the boat <clears throat> so i can run it on 3s you know Before we cut our stuff into retainer we need to actually get our flex cable cut to size so we could put our flex cable in the stuffing tube in the collet hold everything in place while we install our retainer so everything lines up nicely okay now with this 0.130 cable right here it won't fit in the micro strut it's too big you see that so um we need to get a length basically get a length to the drive dog okay our drive dog is going to be right here on that flat spot so we got our drive dog on, okay, and you see how this .30 cable has a, a larger, like, 4 millimeter area, and it goes to the 8th, okay, so it's basically going to be locked in our, in our drive line, all right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this old length, well, it's not old, it's brand new, a length of .98 cable right here, okay, and I'm just going to stick it in my drive line, make sure it goes all the way into my, my cup floor, my collet, okay and bottoms out all right i'm just going to use this to measure it all right we're going to mark it right where our drive dog is going to be i'm actually going to mark it a little bit long just a couple millimeters long we are human okay and uh what i'm going to do is put my mark where my drive dog was okay because that's exactly where our drive dog is going to be so we're going to put the mark where the drive dog is and basically cut our cable right here okay you guys see that it's just an easy fast way to do it all right i'm gonna cut it a little bit long and we could take it down to size as needed so um i'm gonna go out to the shop i'm actually gonna cut this real quick so after a couple trips out to the shop i uh i got it i got it exactly where i want it okay it's in the coupler it's all the way up into the coupler on the motor there and that four millimeter section is basically barely sticking out the end of my stuffing tube okay and uh, we slide our strut over the eighth section of the shaft and it should line up with the holes in the mount you guys see that and uh we got a little bit of wiggle room there you know what i'm saying so that looks pretty good okay so i've got a little a little section of a uh, teflon liner here i really don't want to cut the big one down right now so i may use this short one because I, actually i think it's going to be perfect it might be a little too freaking short but but that's okay that's okay all right so we're, i'm gonna go ahead and slip it over my my shaft it goes in the yeah so it's actually just a little short so it'll probably kind of float around in there and that's okay with me it don't have to be exactly the length on this that that's going to be perfect man a little 24 40 4500 kv they only tr create so much torque so um we actually need to solder up the end of this cable so it doesn't uh flatten out 
you know, and fray up when we tighten down this grub screw right here. So I've got a little crucible I've made with some solder in it, and we're going to dip the end of the cable. And it's actually going to do me some good because this collet right here is actually like a, a fraction of an inch larger, a little bit too large for this cable. I mean, there, there's a little bit of room in there, and whenever you crimp down on it, it's going to like throw it out of whack so that little bit of solder might actually do it some good when we go to uh, tighten down our grub screw and it won't crimp down on the cables too bad and mess up our cable. Okay, I just dipped it in this hot solder. I used the old socket, wiped it off, fluxed it, dipped it, wiped it, fluxed it, dipped it, wiped it, fluxed it, heated it up and uh, that's what you get right there. Throw our Teflon liner on. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, well, if I can get it. All right, gonna slide it into the stuffing tube and the strut into place. All I gotta do is put my screw on there. As you can see, I got the solder showing, so we uh, we should we should be okay once we tighten down that that grub screw that's the only bad thing about using a this style coupler for a flex cable you'll 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 crimp it off if you're not careful so you definitely got to solder the end all right if you can sometimes these things are too tight and you don't have enough room for solder so just keep that in mind Actually, you know what let's go ahead and do this stuff into retainer okay so i got some heavy duty scissors right here this stuff's really thin i just need a little something to keep it in place you know and um I'm just gonna kind of eye it here, you know. It's no nothing too serious here. So I'm gonna cut me a little little square off. Okay, and it's just basically I'm gonna go under there at an angle. So I got the retainer in that turned out pretty good it's still kind of kicking off so uh you can see my my flex cable it's dead center in my stuffing tube there it looks pretty good so i got my cooling line okay just using what came with the kit all right uh i've got my little measuring drill bit measurer deal 3 16 cooling line okay i'm gonna drill a pilot hole and i've already got the correct drill bit ready to go all right um whenever you're running your cooling line just make sure you don't run it anywhere you're going to be laying tape especially if you're relying on tape to hold your hatch down you know you don't want to run your cooling line <laughs> where you're going to be laying down tape i've done that in the past and, and regretted it you know just had to work around it so just keep that in mind i actually was the either think i'm thinking about just going right through here right through the transom boom you know right through there boom 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 yep final answer i just run it through the transom behind this receiver beside behind the servo make a little loop right here to the esc out the esc to the motor out the motor and out the left side of the boat i like to put my exits my nipples on the left side so i can see the water shooting out whenever i'm doing my laps you know so final answer we're going to go through the transom So I got the cooling exit in the boat, I got all my water cooling run, kind of got my wires a little bit consolidated just for right now. I've got my cable out, I'm going to go ahead and grease it up real quick and uh, kind of spool it up and see what it, what it sounds like. I actually ran into a little problem, I had my drive dog on and um, I went to go put this Aquacraft Mini Mono prop on and it won't fit on my shaft, alright, it's an eighth prop, it won't fit on. I've tried to shove it on there. It won't, it won't fit on. So, uh, I don't know if you guys can see how this shaft is designed here. It's actually got like a little, the eighth part. Then it's got like a little um, machined down area right here that they cut threads into. I don't want to take any off where my drive dog's at. 
because I want that to fit tight. I want my propellers to fit tight, but I don't want to have to fight my propellers every time I put it on. So I've actually had to do this to several boats, you know. It don't take much, just a little bit. That's 120 sandpaper. Yeah, so it's actually starting to go on there now. Alright, that should do it. Let's see. Yep, that's perfect. Alright, that's perfect. So, going to throw my drive dog back on there. Got Loctite on it already, so should be good to go. Put our prop on. Find our prop nut. Not much room for prop. Not much room for prop on there, that's for sure. Or prop nut, anyway. Probably one of the biggest props I can run on this boat. This is a 32. Well, I want you to look. Went right into my hole. I got drilled out my desk for my for balancing props. I guess that's better than going on the freaking ground. Can't find it. <laughs> when I drop stuff on the ground, I don't even go to like catch it anymore. I just watch it. I watch where it goes. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I watch it like a freaking hawk. Okay, so let's grab a little set of pliers here and get this thing tight. Yeah, see that see that throttle on that 50? You see that? I'm not even touching it. See, that's a generic 50 for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I got it trimmed out pretty good. It, it, it's always done that. Even my 30s, even these generic 30 amp ESCs I got, they've always done that too. That's kind of why I wanted to run this 20. But I don't want to take a chance of messing this speed control up because it's actually one of my favorite small speed controls. For a 20, it's got some power. I, I actually, I want to say it's like a 30, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> it even says 30 right there you know but it's classified as a 20 it's one of my favorites and i'm actually putting this working on this video i smoked my 22 turn 390 for my jet jam right here um well actually it still works but the the weight that helps the boat self right so uh, that that little weight fell off my motor and it was rattling around in the motor so what i did is i took this Aquacraft Mini Mono Motor, and I put it in the Jet Jam, all right, so that it'll self, still self right. Working on the video, that'll be out soon. We got the rudder all hooked up in the last video. That works great with that capillary tube and music wire, the through hole right there. Okay, servos mounted out with hot glue, and I, I, I mounted my Tactic TTX 240 with hot glue as well. Okay, use some heat uh, heat shrink there to kind of consolidate my wires. I still got to do some consolidation. But um, my homemade trim tabs, turn fins. Okay, those turn fins might actually be too big for the boat. Uh, I got some more turn fins right here that Brandon Wynn sent me. These are uh, extra small, and I got some plastic composite small ones. I got another set of small mediums that we could try out. So I gotta put a nut right here, but everything's Loctite. I got everything Loctite on the boat, the drive line. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, uh, this ESC, I don't know if I mentioned that already or not, but it's got, it's got like some glitchiness to it. That's why I didn't wanna run it in this boat. The low end linear, you hear that? I barely on the throttle, which we'll probably be running it wide ass open anyway but uh that that 50 it's just a generic and it just don't have the linear throttle you know uh just got that kind of sitting right here the cooling lines and everything wires it should all keep it all keep it in, in one place you know this boat's not going to be blazing fast but it might actually surprise us with that 50 and this 2440 4500 kv on 3s 1300 i'll probably run that little cheap generic 1600 in the boat and i've got a 2200 that'll fit in here as well um i've got velcro holding it in i'll probably put another piece like right here in case i need to move my cg forward i can that's why i actually put my exit my water exit forward it was actually tough to get to right there um but i'm kind of glad i did because i can move my my battery weight forward if i needed to you know uh right now right now my cg 
it's about one third the boat with it sitting right here so i got a, a perfect weight you know um everything's done everything's done nice and smooth operation so the next pretty day we'll take it out we'll take it out i'm interested to see how it runs see the little little steps in it right there like a little side step the bottom actually goes to a deeper v so hopefully the boat accepts this drive line i have because the actual plans called for a submerged drive but the boat was actually built for a nitro motor you know a little what i don't even know points one seven nitro or point twenty one nitro i don't quote me on that it's a little little small nitro motor with a submerged drive hopefully i went this the right right way but if it if i didn't this boat right here i designed it with that in mind you know if i want to switch it to a submerged drive later on with this particular setup i will be able to i got my motor mount that i can actually bend a little bit more angle in i can just fill in this hole i mounted my my uh strut bracket low so i can actually go submerged if i want to you know experimental so we're gonna see we'll see hopefully you guys enjoyed the build series um i was trying to go for a short video it turned into a long one Oh yeah, so before I let you go, I want to introduce you guys to the next build. A lot of you guys probably already know if you're here. Well, I guess another minute or so won't hurt. Okay, so this is the next build for the channel. It's a little 13-inch hydroplane. I've actually done a lot of work to it. I finished up the seam. It was a, a three-piece boat, top side, bottom side, and the hatch. And it had to be joined on the seam. I got it from Brandon, and he actually did a good job joining it. But the, the, the boat itself had a twist in it. You can actually see it. This back side right here is really high, and this this side right here is really low. And uh, this side right here was high, and that side was low. So I've actually sanded a lot of material off here and back here, trying to catch it up with one another. Okay, the, the ride pads were, uh, this side right here had a real steep ride angle. This side over here had a low ride angle. So I've actually, the boat used to sit like this. It used to sit literally like that. So I've actually sanded my ride pads here. I'm, I've been sanding them flat. And I'm actually working on, or I'm going to start working on some dead rise on the left sponson. Okay, you guys see how much wider that left sponson is than the right sponson. Okay, none of the non-trip angles were the same on it. So I've actually got those pretty much caught up. And you can really see the twist in the back left corner right here. Can you guys see how how much of a twist is in the hull? See that back left corner right there? And the right side's really high. So what I'm going to do is sand this right side down to catch it up with this left side so I don't have to add any material. I'm trying to lighten it up. I've already, like I said, I've already taken 100 grams off. So I'm actually, since I've got to do all that, I'm actually going to sand these right here off. These little non-trip chines right here. And uh, catch it up. Um, you would think that the left side non-trip would be have less less angle but it's actually got more more angle than the right side so i'm actually sanding some non-trip into this <laughs> trying to catch both sides up so i'll let you guys go the video is getting long this is my next project i can't wait i'm gonna paint it blue and yellow it's gonna be a micro ul19 <laughs> all right so uh thanks for watching big b ryan clad rc channel where we're tinker test and tune everything see you next time guys